So in the last video, we discussed permutations, which are ways of ordering a group of objects. And the first number in the notation uh, is how many objects you start from. So we start from three objects, and, how, and the second number is how many we're going to place in a row. So 3p3 means there are going to be three different objects. How many ways can we order them? And by counting here, abc, acb, bac, bca, cab, and cba, then we find that 3p3 is equal to 6. And in the last video, we also gave a formula for this, so I encourage you to look back on it if you're still fuzzy. And in this video, we're going to discuss combinations, which instead of permutations, in which ABC, ACB, and BAC, and all, etc., are all different, what matters is what objects you pick, and the order doesn't matter at all. So 3C3 uh, means we have three total objects, and we pick or choose three of them at a time. And how many different ways are there to choose the three objects? Well, in this particular case, um, there are only going to be one way to choose three distinct objects here because we're not going to include all the different orders. So therefore, 3C3 is going to be 1. And this is sort of the first case. We're going to go through a few different cases so you get the idea of how it works. Um, the second case, 3P2 means you start from three objects and you pick two of them and the order um, matters. In other words, AB and BA both count and we count them twice. So in this case, we have AB, AC, BA, BC, CA, and CB. And therefore, 3P2 is going to be equal to 6. But notice that we can group these in terms of um, two at a time with the objects that they share. So AB and BA go together, AC and CA go together, and BC and CB go together. Notice that in this case, um, there are three different groupings based on what objects make up uh, each pair. So each of those le uh, lend us, lead us to what 3C2 is. 3C2 is means we can choose A and B together, in which the order doesn't matter. We could do either way. A and C, and B and C. So those are the ways of choosing two objects, um, and we're not going to include every order for each of the two objects. What matters is what objects we choose, not the order. So therefore, 3C2 is going to be 3. As you see, there's a very strong connection between permutations and combinations, but what exactly is it? Well, let's look at this example here. We have four objects, A, B, C, and D, and those are all the different orderings of those four objects. So whenever we pick four objects, we're going to be able to order them in a lot of different ways. And then in order to get back to how many combinations we have, that means we're going to have to divide the permutations by something. The question is, what? Well, if we're going to divide by the total number of orders we can make out of the objects that we choose. In other words, to get a combination, we divide a permutation by the number of orders we can put each of our selections in. But if you go back, you'll notice that um, if we have four objects, then there are going to be four factorial orders. If there are going to be five objects, we're going to have five factorial orders. So that means a combination is the permutation divided by r factorial, where r is the number of objects um, we take at a time. And using the previous formula we learned yesterday, that's going to be equal to n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. Um, basically, a combination will almost always be less than uh, a permutation, uh, given n objects and you're picking r of them at a time. And as a last note, often you'll see combinations written like this. Um, and you read this n choose r, the number of ways you could choose r objects uh, out of n total objects. And this has a lot of uses throughout mathematics, so it's very good to be um, familiar with this notation.